it is great to have you stopping by, especially on the weekend. I'm John Zadar, this is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of August 16th. Now what I do on this show is to share with you a hot penny stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. Penny stocks are any stock under five bucks that you can find on every single market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And normally when I find a hot penny stock, it's when I'm looking at the charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And literally at a glance, you can see if a chart has heat. You can see a breakout setup. You can see a strong surge going for days. You can see big bounces. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to climb, take the time to go through that company's press releases and filings, looking for some hot information. You find some hot news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. We're taking a look now at ticker TSE, Trinzio. I found Trinzio by looking at the charts. It's a hot chart. It is an atypical breakout chart. My favorite setup for strong runs. We talk about them in virtually every single show. Now, I did just put out a video dedicated to these on Wednesday. You want to get the nitty gritty about atypical breakouts and how to determine which ones are strong, stronger, and strongest? That's the video. I highly advise you watch it. It's one of the best I put out for information. So, TSC, she finished the day on Friday at $2.92 and she was up almost 9%. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, which comes with a host of benefits compared to OTC stocks. First off, there's no transaction fees trading on the major exchange. Buying and selling your shares is free. Plus, you can trade pre-market, after-market. Folks, there are some huge runs, big bounces in these periods of time, lots of money-making opportunities that you can never take advantage of with an OTC stock. Major exchange has a ton more money and a ton more volume than the OTC does. Definitely where you want to be trading. And last, but definitely not least, the major exchange has a hell of a lot more rules than the OTC does. There's a lot of hoops these companies have to be jumping through all the time, and there's lots of people watching, which ultimately just makes our investments safer. So what is TSE about? Well, they tell us over here in the most recent news press, Trinzio is a specialty material solutions provider, partnering with companies to bring ideas to life. From design to manufacturing, the company taps into decades of experience in diverse material solutions to address customers' unique challenges in a wide range of industries, including building and construction, consumer goods, medical, and mobility. Trinzio's approximately 3,100 employees bring endless creativity to reimagining the possibilities with clients all over the world from the company's locations in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Trinzio reported net sales of approximately $3.7 billion in 2023. We're jumping on over here to the company's website to get more information. We're here at Trinzio.com. Now they tell us the company they're operating is actually called America's Styrenix. This is a leading integrated producer of polystyrene and styrene monomer. America Styrenix offers solutions and services to customers in a variety of markets throughout the Americas. Now, the company works in a lot of different sectors. They have a lot of different applications for their products. And I'll be quite honest here, I don't know what they all are. I didn't do a deep dive. I didn't go through the entire website. I'm going to let you do that. But they do more than just work with building and construction. They also work with consumer goods, things such as footwear, home appliances, packaging, personal care, textiles and carpets. They're also involved in the medical sector and mobility, talking about cars and EVs. So they are involved in a lot of different things that I am just not aware of. Hopefully you'll get to the bottom of it right here on their website. Now they tell us that the company was formed in 2008 as a 50-50 joint venture between the Dow Chemical Company and Chevron Phillips. Two huge companies, folks. Now, I don't know when or why, but for some reason, Dow Chemical stepped out of the picture and Trinzio stepped in, took over that 50% holdings. So now they own 50% of the company as well as Chevron Phillips. 
Now, they have a primary office headquartered in Texas, but they've got facilities in a lot of different places. They have six of them here in the United States, one in Colombia, and I do believe they're opening up one now in Italy. Now, let's take a look at the news for the company. Now, there's not a lot of news over here. Most of it is about their financials. They do tell us back at the end of June, they issued a quarterly dividend of one penny for every share that you own. I know that doesn't sound like much at all, but for people that invest in dividend stocks, it's not about how much any one company pays you. It's all the dividend stocks that they're invested into, all giving them dividends every three months, adding into that pile. That's how they like to play dividend stocks. Then they tell us at the beginning of July, they are working to become a greener company. Most companies are doing that right now. Then halfway through July, they announced new receivable financing facility from KKR. This is $150 million that they're allowed to use to buy materials to fulfill contracts. So whenever they get an order, they don't have to worry if they have enough money to fulfill that order. They've always got money in advance to buy those materials they need. And then at the beginning of August, they report their second quarter 2024 financial results, which we're going to take a look at right now. First though, let's take a look at the relative volume for the company. Over the last 30 days, she's been averaging just under a half a million shares. Friday, she was up to 855,000 shares. Share structure for TSE, well, that's pretty good. Outstanding share count is about 35 million. Now, I have no clue what the insiders own, so I can't calculate what our float's going to be. All I can say is I know the float is never more than the outstanding share count, so it isn't going to be more than $35 million. Anything under $100 million is a decent float. Market cap for the company, we're at about $103 million. Financials for TSE. Whoa. We got some big numbers here, folks. Remember, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers we see on these charts. So what we're looking at here are billions of dollars. In 2020, they were doing $2.7 billion. 2021 kicked it up to $4.8 billion, bumped it to 4.9 in 22, and then dropped $1.3 billion in 2023. And they are bringing home pretty decent profits, and they are in the black. Taking a look at our quarterly reports. Well, those aren't bad. A year ago, we were at 962. We were falling, started climbing again, and right now we're at $920 million for the last three months, ending June 30th, 2024, with profits of 68 million. Balance sheet for the company. Let's not forget those three zeros over here. Cash and cash equivalents, which I like to think of as the bank. We got about 105 million in the bank. Total assets, a whopping $2.8 billion. And total liabilities, ouch, a whopping $3.2 billion. So we are holding some deficit here of about $413 million. <whistles> Take a look at those disclosures for TSE. We've got three Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. Now, they can do that in a lot of different ways. But as investors, we're most interested when they buy them or sell them. And these are real easy to read. You dive into one, up here will be the person's name who's making the transaction, who they are to the company, what date the transaction occurred on, and right there in the middle is all the juice. We're looking at our code first. You want this to be an S for a sale or a P for a purchase any other letter and it's something else and we're really not interested in that this will tell you how many shares the transaction is about and the price involved now if you really want to know what the other letter is about sometimes you can get an explanation right down here explanation of response now this is a sale this is a director selling about 11,000 shares and they had 46,000 shares so they sold just about one-fifth one-fourth of all their holdings. What about those other two Form 4s? Well, this is the CEO and president. He just purchased himself 40,000 shares at $2.57, and he owns 462,000. And the other one, this is our senior vice president. He has just purchased 
75,000 shares and he owns 207,000 shares right there. So we have two purchases here. We do see money coming in, big money. We do see that they're making a profit, though they do have stockholder deficit. The stock's chart is what's hot. The news isn't all that hot, folks, but I'm telling you, when you have a hot chart, you don't need a hot catalyst. You don't need a fresh catalyst. An old, little, tiny, stale catalyst is enough to get the stock moving, and I think we've got that. So let's go take a look at that chart. Yeah, it's another day, but we're going to do this the same old way. We're going to chart TSC on my free trading platform, TOS. That's Think or Swim. We are looking at Trinseal on a one day, one year chart. As you can see, Trinseal has been in a serious downtrend the entire year. Well, almost the entire year. She did stop falling once she hit that low bubble. Now she's going sideways, looking like she's biding time, waiting for that 200 day SMA to go completely flat. That'll be a perfect opportunity to break out. Now looking at our oscillators down here, our PPO is climbing, our MACD is climbing, and our RSI is climbing. This looks like a very promising chart to me. It's coming down to our six month, four hour view. So now we've got a high bubble of $8.83. This hit back in January. And off of that high, she went into a hard, deep dive, falling all the way down to $5.16. Once she came underneath that 200, she really never got back on top of it. She did hit her head on it a few times as she was falling, came down to this low bubble, off of the low bubble. She's hit her head on that 200 twice, falling down to the 200 haul, which is what I was hoping for and expecting. And off of that, she is bouncing up to the 200 day SMA, looking promising, looking like she's ready to break out. Now, before we go any further, let's grab up some SNRs, some supports and resistances, so we have an idea of where to get in and out of this stock. So it looks like we've got one right about there. We definitely got one in this vicinity here. I see another one right about there here and definitely up here. Now I'm not saying this is all the supports and resistances, but these are the strong ones. I've got these set at 535, 431, 389, 323, and three bucks. So let's zoom in on current times and see what's going on with this chart. So she was in a downtrend underneath all of her SMAs hit that low bubble of $1.94. Had a delay. She went sideways for about three or four days here, and then for some reason decided to jump. We were roughly at two bucks. She went up to roughly three bucks, just piercing the 200, a direct line to it. Fell back, landed perfectly on our 20-day SMA, bounced up, pierced the 200 even more, then fell back hard, back to the 200 haul. Now, folks, this doesn't bother me. I'm expecting this. I'm hoping for this. The 200 haul is a lot like your 200 day MA. Both of them have equal power, equal authority. The difference between the two, the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a different powerful line on your chart that the price can relate to because the 200 haul relates to the price. And what I see happen over and over again, when the price is underneath the 200 MA, but above the 200 haul, you will normally see when they start getting tight, the price will drop down to the 200 haul and use it as a diving board, a catapult to launch up through every single SMA to and through the 200. I love the 200 haul folks. This is a beautiful play right here. She is now breaking through our first resistance here at $2.98. All of our SMAs are just now starting to turn up and climb. Osculators, PPO is climbing hard and fast. MACD, we got green bars accumulating, pushing up. RSI is up there at 65 underneath the overbought. Personally, I like to see the RSI red. I like this to be as high as it can possibly get. It doesn't worry me at all. Jumping down to that 20-day, one-hour view. 
So here's our high of $3.13 above our first support resistance. Coming up to our second one at 322, and these are ballparked. It's tough to get a perfect one on a four hour chart, but that is close. She has come down to that low bubble. She has bounced off of that low bubble through all of our SMAs, went sideways. Look where she bounced. She bounced right on the 200 haul. And when did she break out? Look right there, folks. My 200 haul changes colors when it starts to climb, it goes from purple to blue. It is starting to climb right there. And when did it break out? Right when it started to change. When my 200 haul went into an uptrend, we had a breakout. She jumped from $2.47 and went up to almost three bucks. You're looking at about a 20% jump right there. When she came back down, she is now on top of our 200 day SMA. She fell to the 20, not because she was falling, but because she wanted to push off of something. She pushed off of that 20, got up on top of her nine day SMA, and she is climbing slowly and steadily the whole day Friday. After market, she dipped a little bit, but it looks like she is still climbing. And look at all of our SMAs. Every single one of them has turned up nicely, combed evenly, coming, going over that 200 day SMA. When a smaller SMA crosses a bigger SMA, it's called a golden cross. What this does is give extra boost to the price climbing. We've already had one push through, here come two more. Look at our volume. Now we can see our volume is increasing. It is getting stronger and stronger. All of our oscillators, every single one of them is climbing except our RSI, which was falling ever so slightly, but right now is just going sideways. Take a look at our five day, 15 minute chart. We could go to the five day, five minute, but this is less cluttered and pretty much lays out the same. So here's our price bouncing on the 200 day MA as she's slowly falling downhill. But look at all of our other SMAs. They all crossed the 200 right here. They all come together. The price hit a low and boom. Once all of them were meeting up here above the 200, we have a takeoff. We have a rocket. She jumped from 238 up to that $2.93, falling back down to the 50, hanging on to that 50 for dear life. Here comes the 20 up underneath to give extra support. And that was it. She jumped at the beginning of the day. She was here at 268, end of the day at 298, falling down to our 20, bouncing back up. This looks good, folks. The SMAs are all over the place, but they're all over the place going uphill just like our 200 day SMA. The only thing that looks peculiar here is all of our oscillators are falling. I wasn't expecting that. This chart looks good. I see strength in it. We had two red bars here that did fall from about 294 down to 286, which yanked these down. I am expecting these to all start turning up, but as they sit right now, they all look like they're pushing down. So reading the oscillators, I would guess that this could come back down to the 20. It could come down to 287, 286, but honestly, I'm not feeling it. I think this is going to turn around in a big hurry and start to climb and start to push towards our resistances here. The next one being at 323, 324. I like the charts folks. This chart right here tells me she is ready to break out. That is a perfect breakout chart. My 200 haul turning up, breaking through the 200 day SMA, crushing all of the SMAs in between. Oscillators as strong as you can ask for. This is really looking good to me from a chart point of view. Now there's a lot of information I didn't cover out there, folks. You need to go to the website, see all the different products, see all the applications, see the deals they're involved with right now. They do have a lot going on. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you later.